Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Now, we are here with another video from Death Battle, and this one is Frieza versus Megatron, Dragon Ball versus Transformers. I'm pretty excited for this one. I haven't, I know this came out like two months ago or three months ago, I'm not sure, but I'm really excited to check out this uh, Death Battle video that I'm gonna be check that I'm gonna watch. So, yeah, if you guys are new to the channel here, make sure you are subscribed. Anyways, let's go ahead and check out this video. The Dread Emperor from Dragon Ball. And yep. Megatron, the Decepticon commander from Transformers. When these two dictators collide, the cosmos will tremble. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Yes, sir. Deep in the bowels of outer space lies a monster so cruel, so callous. Oh, so uh, this is Lord Frieza. That the universe itself Lord Frieza. Behold the mighty Lord Frieza. Oh, he's adorable with the horns and that floppy tail and the. Down inside? Oh, awesome. And he's laughing. Cool. Frieza's diminutive stature and faux gentility were intentionally deceptive and rooted in a surprising place. In response to the Japanese economic bubble at the time, Frieza's design was meant to evoke real estate speculators. Series mangaka Akira Toriyama has described such speculators as the worst sort of people. Yes, oh. really. I guess you could say Frieza is more than meets the eye. Oh, wait, shit, that's later. Much is unknown about Frieza's alien okay. race and heritage, only that he and his father were born as mutants with abnormally high power levels. Oh, like how the doc said, my blood alcohol level was 0.8 straight out the womb. Frieza was so crazy strong that unlike most Dragon Ball characters who transform to get stronger, Frieza transforms to get weaker. So he doesn't, like, accidentally nuke a planet. Only intentionally. With his father's empire and army at his beck and call, Frieza would cross the universe, conquering worlds one by one and selling them to the highest bidder. Just oh. like real estate speculators. And if anyone objected, he'd just kill them, their entire family, and everyone they ever knew. Just like real estate speculators. While he usually lets his weird multicolored alien grunts do his dirty work for him, Frieza's not afraid to throw down himself. Especially if some spiky-haired space monkeys start getting too uppity for their own good. Frieza's strength comes from his innate understanding and manipulation of his own key, or life energy, which he can use to enhance his physicality or manifest into projectile attacks. Like his classic death beam, death bolt, death wave, death cannon, death Can he do saucer. anything yeah. with his powers? Yeah. Like... Slice or with his mind. anything else from his eyes, create key force fields, and he even learned to sense the key of others through sheer observation alone. He's fast enough to keep up with Goku's key attacks, which he has a lot of fights there. Well, kind of, but damn. Oh, okay. 17 quadrillion times the speed of light, and he's gotten even stronger and faster since then. You know you're a badass when you can stroll into Planet Vegeta, a planet filled with people whose only higher aspirations involve murder and hair gel, and talk shit like you own the place. And he got so paranoid about one of them getting strong enough to kick his ass that he blew up the friggin' planet. Considering Planet Vegeta has 10 times the gravity of Earth, this would mean it likely has 10 times the mass and 100 times the energy required to overcome its gravitational binding energy and destroy it. That's wow. 5.3 Yoda tons of TNT. And that was in his weakest form. Too bad he kind of missed a spot. Or several because a bunch of Saiyans survived to fight another day. Space genocide just ain't what it used to be. This would come back to bite him. Oh my gosh, he is un... He is unpunchable. And accidentally ended up being the reason he turned into the legendary Super Saiyan. Like the albino dildo he is, Frieza has survived being pounded by Broly for over an hour straight. Crushed by Goku's spirit bomb and then split in half. Oh. Consumed by an exploding planet and left to float in the vacuum of space. He can survive without the vast majority of his body, though unlike other Dragon Ball villains, he can't heal on his own. It 
didn't help him that much after he got his ass sent to hell. But because of that dragon in his balls, he was back at it again. And with just four months worth of training, the first time he'd ever trained in his entire life, Frieza was able to achieve a new transformation capable of surpassing the Super Saiyan, Golden Frieza. That's a level wow. of laziness I aspire to, Wiz. Maybe an art Frieza here lets him keep up with Super Translate Saiyan. Translate into Goku that? Vegeta, That's crazy. Super Saiyan God Turn Goku himself into Gold Frieza. Seven in a punch clash with the God of Destruction, Beerus. And the shockwaves of their punches were able to reach the edges of existence in only a few seconds. Over 270 quadrillion times the speed of light. And that is before so many years of power-ups and training between then and now. Totally crazy, but nothing compared to his newest and greatest form. A transformation capable of surpassing Goku's Ultra Instinct and Vegeta's Ultra Ego. Oh, wow. Their peaks at this point. A transformation even stronger than Gas, who was wished to be the strongest in the universe. He literally said F you to the Dragon Balls. This is Black Frieza. The all-seeing Oracle Fish had prophesied the coming of the universe's strongest. And perhaps he was talking about Frieza all along. Come on, give us another prediction. Oh, Wiz, I think you're going to die. No, for some godforsaken reason, he didn't use his newfound power to kill those pesky Saiyans. They were right there, you moron. In fact, he once committed the arch-villain's greatest sin and teamed up with them to save their universe and beat Jiren, a being comparable to the okay. gods of destruction. Because no one's allowed to destroy the universe but him. And that's a promise he means to keep. This almighty emperor will continue to rule the universe with an iron grip and a heart of ice. Skip the ad. Alright, we're on. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by... If you want to watch the sponsor, the link is in the description. And live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Or you live even longer and become an 80s toy commercial. This is Megatron. In Cybertron's ancient past, the planet was ruled by the Functionist Religious Order, which decreed a Transformer's natural-born alternate mode determined their role and status in society rather than letting them choose for themselves. Born into this repressive caste system, Megatron of Tarn dreamed of something more. So this giant Hasbro toy robot, only $5.99 at your nearest Rite Aid, wrote a manifesto on peaceful dissent that got popular with the oppressed Cybertronian working class. So much so, in fact, that the Senate tried to have him assassinated. Whoa! Politics alert! After surviving that brush with death, Megatron was convinced that peace could never be an option. The oh. only path left to overthrow the crippling social order was violent revolution. So, were the Autobots Damn. originally the bad guys here? Optimus Prime? More like Optimus Crime. Never <laughs> say that Megatron wasn't committed. The civil war he started between the two groups lasted nine million fucking years. And again, remember... Toy robots. He was aided in his war efforts by his immensely powerful fusion cannon, a giant laser bazooka that can hit targets from 12 miles away and level a small town. A in long a way. Shot. These projectiles are so fast, they're able to exit the atmosphere from ground level after only a single second. By scaling the distance of the Earth using the angle of this shot, the fusion cannon's projectile must be moving over 4,200 times the speed of sound. But, like me, the fusion cannon needs a little time to recharge between shots. So Megatron's got some tools to keep the job going. He can close the I don't know. Maybe the next death battle video will come shield. out next week. I don't know. know. I don't know. They, I thought they usually post on, uh, on Mondays. And arms, launch buzzsaws strong enough to slice through solid rock, fly through the air, and open up a force field known as a panic bubble. Now, it might seem like a huge flaw that it lets enemy combatants inside, but that's only until you realize it won't let them back out again. That's when the panic part comes in. Megatron's not trapped in there with you. You're trapped in there with him. Megatron's Cybertronian body is strong enough to match the Autobot leader Optimus Prime, who can toss around oil tankers weighing hundreds of thousands of tons. And Megatron's metallic hide was tough enough to survive an oh explosion my gosh. so massive, it launched the entire planet of Cybertron through space. By taking a look at Cybertron's mass and how fast it was sent flying to get its overall kinetic energy, Megatron must have survived a blast equal to nearly 4.5 nina tons of TNT, enough to annihilate a small star. He could 
even keep up with Decepticons like Starscream, who can fly that much? the galaxy from Earth to Cybertron at hundreds of thousands of times the speed of light. And he wouldn't be a Transformer without being able to transform what into very a tank, a stealth bomber jet, uh, and a gun. Just a gun. Walter P38. Just a gun. I'm sorry, Wiz. I know Can you even shoot? Can you even shoot? Like, just turn yourself into a gun and shoot. Oh my gosh. Oh, I guess it worked now. Oh my god. That looks even sillier. You may be laughing, but Megatron is no joke. By oh. utilizing space bridge teleportation technology, Megatron can establish a remote link up to a nearby black hole and teleport the antimatter it produces to his location through his eyeballs. Should matter and antimatter meet, they will be mutually annihilated. That's, that's unbelievable. That is freaking unbelievable there. It doesn't matter how durable the matter is, it will be destroyed at the subatomic level. As Megatron's war for control of Cybertron dragged on, all of his highfalutin ideals started to fall to the wayside. In essence, there used to be a point to the war. Now, war was the point. His only goal left was to rule Cybertron with a literal iron fist. That's where Megatron's what? greatest weapon came into play, his mind. The dude is a strategic and tactical genius who's always thinking 10 steps ahead. He's fought powerful Transformers like Grimlock, Predaking, and the Decepticon, a being with the power of an entire evil universe behind it. He and Optimus have even fought Nova Prime and Regenesis Shockwave, both of whom could utilize the energy of that same universe. Megatron once sealed himself inside an Omniglobe and commanded a thousand real-life battles at once, funneling every iota of relevant information into his brain at the same time the sheer deluge of data would be incomprehensible for anyone without that supercomputer brain but all that robot ass kicking wow. ended up as a drug and the only true loser was cybertron with the planet in ruins and its civilization extinguished the cybertronian golden age was long over and the vanguard of its destruction was megatron who's now a crusty saturday morning cartoon villain with a voice that sounds like he smokes 40 packs a day and a hate boner for his boneheaded second in command star scream after countless millennia of a humiliating stalemate with his boy scout rival megatron's brilliant mind finally turned inward he remembered that his early writings advocated for peaceful conversion and free thought instead of domination it took you nine million years to remember why you started fighting in the first place would that memory get lost in the cloud and what was possibly his most surprising tactical move yet megatron saved the universe from annihilation as an Autobot. What? He realized that after millions of years of indefinite war, the ideals that he fought for, freedom, justice, equality, had switched sides, and Megatron had to as well. Turns out there was more to this supervillain than met the eye, because true to his nature, Megatron transformed. Damn. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by BetterHelp. So if you're thinking about starting, you can switch therapists and... All right. All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a death battle. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's see who wins this death battle. I don't know if Frieza's going to win. My vote's on Frieza, I guess. My vote's on Frieza winning. Of planet cyber, whatever I, Lord Freezer, claim this world as my own. Cheer for me or face annihilation. I have fought for my planet for eons. I would rather see it turn to ash than reside in your filthy hands, organic scum. <laughs> I love it when they monologue back. Uh Frieza? Pity. I'll have to construct a new mothership from your corpse. These guys seem powerful. Is that clunky robot body too slow to keep up? My wish should more than suffice you blithering pawns. Mega 
Megatron's un untouchable right there. What the frick? Come on, Frieza! There you go. There you go. What the frick? Oh, gold Frieza. He's turning to gold Frieza. Super Saiyan. <laughs> Come on, Frieza. Oh. It looks like she, it looks like he had a better plan. Oh. Well, doesn't this just always happen? I give it three, no, five minutes. My planet! Uh, Lord what the heck? Ruler of a dying planet. My planet. Where is your army? Where is your ship? So powerful. And yet you will wander the depths of space for eternity. All because of me. What a... You despicable critter. Oh. I'll torture you until you're... Did he turn into um, a black freezer? I think he did, yeah. Oh no. Uh, Frieza? Is he okay? Oh. Oh, you sliced him. Wait, what the frick? Dang, man. Ten seconds. Idiot. Megatron's ruthless resilience may have netted him a win in some scenarios, but Frieza's overwhelming power gave him a clear edge. Megatron's ace in the hole was his antimatter, which would have annihilated Frieza's ass no matter how tough it was. And that was a real possibility. Megatron is a master tactician and manipulator with millions of years of combat experience. Frieza, on the other hand, has always relied on his raw power and intimidation to win fights. When things don't go his way, he has a tendency to freak out. However, Frieza has wow. survived getting most of his body obliterated and kept going. Which meant the antimatter wasn't a surefire win. It would have to completely cover Frieza's whole body before he could react. And Frieza was way too fast for that. While Megatron scaled to characters who could cross galaxies, Frieza has kept up with Goku, who should be at least trillions of times faster. And on his smaller size and key force fields, Frieza had more than enough ways to avoid, defend, or survive the antimatter. So Megatron's only option was power. While Megatron has survived planet-busting explosions, and even fought with a being that had the energy of a universe behind it, Golden Frieza was just too much for him, considering wow. he certainly surpassed Goku and Beerus' punch clash. Since Universe 7 as a whole should be over 13 times larger than our own universe, Frieza's super forms would far exceed Megatron's own power. And that feat happened at the beginning of Dragon Ball Super. Goku has gotten leagues stronger since then, and Black Frieza is currently beyond him. There was just no way Megatron was strong enough to keep up. Megatron was a devious foe, but Frieza's power, speed, and sheer survivability allowed him to crush the Decepticon leader underfoot. I guess you could say Megatron Damn. was cool, but Frieza 
was cooler. The winner is free. All right. Nice one. Thanks for watching. And hey, are you a Death Battle member? We've got a ballot. That was a crazy fight there. I did not expect. I thought Frieza was going to lost there, but hey, at least he won. <laughs> Jeez, man. So yeah, I'm going over some Death Battle videos that I didn't watch. So if you guys want me to watch one that you guys want me to, you guys could. I'm what I'm going back. I'm I'm actually like watching some of the episodes that I mean no, do should we call them episodes? Cause they didn't mention they they mentioned that they're gonna make a another one like season eleven. <laughs> I want to go over every single death battle video. So yeah, if you enjoy this video here, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel here, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.